Welcome guys, a uh, game number one in a best of five qualifier between Daniel and Twig. Uh, this is on Arabia, this is Hidden Cup to Arabia. And for those that don't know, this 16 man qualifier is to see who takes the final two spots in the 16 man event. Uh, 14 players, the 14 best players in the world are already into Hidden Cup 2. And then the 16 players who are rated after them, uh, they are looking to get in. So Daniel is our 12th seed, if I remember correctly, and then is our fourth seed, Twig. Uh, Daniel is the best American in the event. In fact, he's the only American in the event. He's playing as the Chinese. And then we have Slavs for Twig. And Twig is uh, the second best Argentinian player in the world because they have ne there's Nikov out there. He's very solid and he's Slavs. Starting with the maps, it's honestly not the best map long term for Daniel. Uh, the gold and the stone on the hill here could be rough for him. But I think all he needs is a little bit of walling and it's fine. If he walls here and he walls here, then he can build on the front and his gold and the stone is fine. Also Chinese, maybe the one civilization which has a counter to every civilization in the game. The Chinese are crazy good. They have fully upgraded champions. They have fully upgraded cavalier and camels. They have their Chu Canoe. They have Sea Dream. They have Onager. They have an eco bonus. It's an insane civ. And it's, it's a dominant civilization in recent tournaments where players start with the sheep under their control. For now, uh, Daniel is scouting his base. And you'll see the same for Twig. A look at Twig's base. His main gold's here. Uh, easily walled. And then he has his two golds more to the north. I think the concern for Daniel will just be the wood lines throughout the game because he'll have to push forward. But again, he should be fine as long as he walls off this right hand side. Now, a few changes to mention with Hidden Cup to Arabia uh, because there are differences here. The elevation on Hidden Cup to Arabia is less than you'll find on other Arabias. So if you go to low quality. Yeah, you go to low quality, you can see the tiles. Um, this is one, two, three, four tile elevation, and the max tile elevation is five. And that has changed from seven or eight. I forget which is the, the, the normal amount for Arabias. So just imagine if this was an eight tile hill, this would be significantly worse for Daniel. So the idea is, is hills are important, but you don't want them to punish players too much because there's so much randomness in Age of Empires 2 maps. You kind of need to preserve that but you need to lessen the effect they might have. Um, also, the deer are normally in lowerable positions for both players. Uh, the reason for that is on some Arabia maps, one person would have pushable deer like Twig has, and then the other person would have deer on the other side of this wood line in the corner, and you, you couldn't push it. And that that's just not fair. So the best way to solve that problem was to make it a, a more consistent distance from player town centers, so for the most part in Hidden Cup 2, on Arabia, uh, and, and most of the maps that are going to have deer, you'll find that it's closer, just to play safe. Apart from that, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, wolves are 10 times the, the strength of normal wolves on Arabia. So if you send a villager forward, it's most likely to die. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's about it. That's about it. I mean, it's always green terrain. You probably noticed that, but that's about it. So, I think both players will go scouts. That's normal for Chinese. And Chinese, they have camels, so you can go scouts into camels. And also, you can transition into the archers, as I said. And Slavs, they just have an amazing eco. Uh, tip, it's normal for them to go scouts. And then, every time they build a farm, they gain a small advantage, because their farmers farm so, so fast. <laughs> you should have thrown in a couple cannon boars. Yeah, we thought about that, but none of the pros signed up, so we decided to make the change. <laughs> what if... So, so my map creators for this event are people who made maps for community games. So, uh... <laughs> what if they accidentally put in a cannon boar? Just one? That'd be funny. I mean, it would, it would be really embarrassing and bad for my event, but... It, it would be funny in a practice game, at least. Ah, uh, yeah, Lord Penguin. I had already mentioned it, which is why I couldn't think of the third thing. Uh, you don't start with the sheep underneath the TC. On all Hidden Cup 2 maps, you start with the sheep under your control. So there's a difference. In King of the Desert, you had three goats out here, and then one sheep under one goat underneath your TC. 
This, it's, it's standard in that you have four starting sheep in a clump, but one of those sheep you have under your control. So the big reason that Chinese has been picked again nowadays is because in King of the Desert, you, you had the goat underneath your TC and your start wasn't difficult. And it's good to see that Chinese still has a bonus with the sheep not being directly underneath the TC. Daniel's gone Chinese. He has the two bill lead. He's fine. So, I mean, the cool thing about Chinese is they start with six villagers. They just start with zero food. So in the past with them is if you couldn't find your sheep right away, it was really rough to get bill production going. But now with these maps where you at least have one sheep under your control, Chinese are, are seen a lot more often. And there's the stable. So exactly what I said. As long as Daniel builds in front of this, he'll be safe, he'll be fine. And they're both doing the same thing. So something to think about is... Will Daniel Archer transition? So for Chinese, they have tons of weapons. They tend to go scouts, then they can they can go scouts straight into knights in Castle Age or camels in the Castle Age. They can go for crossbow. Slavs, you rarely see that archer switch. Um, oh, oh, Daniel almost sniped the farm there. That would have been sweet. Uh, so Daniel's on the ball, but, but that's something to think about here. I think Twig would ideally only make scouts, save his food, save his resources, and go up towards castle. So... It's important for him that he has some good early engagements. And then for Daniel, I think that... Well, he, need, he needs to, to win some victories in early feudal, so he has those options and he can use them. You don't want to fall behind. Now, the, this is funny. Twig uh, sent a spear forward and it's being attacked by two wolves. <laughs> so that spearman is going to die to the wolves. We'll have our first T90 Wu of the day. And meanwhile, Twig, very aggressive. He slides in here. There's no Spearman to defend. Now, the engagement wasn't great, but it's still decent. He kills the scout. He wants to keep this open, I suppose. Oh! Oh, he almost killed that. Nice micro twig. Let's see if Daniel loops back around for that. I guess not. There's even a third wolf! <laughs> wolf rush, baby! <laughs> this is ridiculous! Take that to the enemy's base. Take it to the enemy's berries or something. That's funny. Oh, I would die if he leaves the wolves on the extra gold by accident. And then the wolves kill something later on in this game. He's just running around. He looks so confident too. Like, I've got this. Yeah, Twig has walled his, his whole base. And uh, Daniel will need to do the same now. What Daniel should do is play very defensively. I, I think it's a bit of a mistake for him to... Well, I guess he's double checking, but he needs to have... Okay, yeah, he needs to have something here. And here come the wolves! <laughs> Nobody expects the wolf rush. Like, what? You know, maybe you can take the wolves away from your base. It depends what the wolf attacks. Oh, it's attacking the villager. Okay, it's fine. That's funny, though. That is really comical. <laughs> that's that's funny. Only on, a, only on T90's Hidden Cup 2 will you see wolf rush. Wait! 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 Oh my god, he almost died. He almost died to that wolf. You need to send him to farms and send somebody else out there to finish. Whew, that was close. Um, what, what, what did I want to... Oh, I wanted to answer a question. Uh, an individual in my Twitch chat asked if we could get the maps. Yeah, if you type exclamation mark HC2 maps, uh, you can download the maps for Boobly. It's just a map pack. It's very simple. Simple mod. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the Boobly page. Yep, you'll get all the maps. You can play the map pack, so if you'd like to play with your friends, uh, you can do the map pack, and it'll randomize all the maps from the tournament. Uh, also, it will give you the option of the individual maps. So there's the range. This is what I was talking about. There's the range for Daniel. Now, I I'm not a huge fan of how he's building his walls this way. Because he has plenty of time to wall this way, and he's not doing it. And the reasoning for it, I don't really understand. If the reasoning is he's scared his opponent's going to run in, I feel like he should probably patrol here and, and just protect himself, which he's not doing. He, he's confirmed that his opponent is full walled, and yet he's sending his scouts after those walls. Twig is, is comfortably 
running forward because Twig, he knows he's walled. But I, I, I guess that Daniel will be able to finish these walls anyhow. I, again, I feel like that could hurt him later on. Twig already is going to be, or is on the way to Castle Age. Ooh, and he's hiding the archery ranges. He's hiding them. Nice. Okay, so he'll go for Crossbowman. And he now confirms that Daniel's doing the same. And Daniel's also on the way up. These extra scouts, though, are more important than you think. Uh, monks will be coming out to collect the relics. It's important to scout the extra golds. There's an extra gold here, and there's an extra gold here. So you do not want to lose them. In fact, I think the main reason that Daniel has the score lead is just because of the, the higher percentage of scouting. Maybe 10% more scouting, and so he has 100 more score. Bones, there's five games in this qualifier. There's five games in rounds one, there's five games in rounds two. And then the semifinals, which are essentially two separate finals, because whoever wins each one makes it into the final spots, uh, those are best of sevens. But I love how active Twig is with his scouts. I, I love how he has confirmed that his opponent's going archers. He he's now checking the stable. And he's trying to tempt Daniel back. Yep, this is all good stuff. And I think that was intentional. Attacking the Palisade Walls to bring Daniel over with the scouts basically meant his archers would be safe and protected as they ran forward. And now he's luring them away. This is good stuff. And now he's getting Crossbow and Bodkin Arrow. Remember, this is not something that Daniel has seen. Daniel is not expecting this, and his archery ranges were on the other side. So Twig, it's, it's so intelligent because he knew the ranges were on this side. He knew they weren't on the hill, so he goes to the right side instead of maybe trying to hit the left side or hit the gold. So now Daniel, he realizes he needs a quick wall. Is there a hole here? Yeah, he needs a quick wall to give himself a bit of time. The Siege Workshop will be enough. And wow, good micro from Daniel. He hasn't lost a villager on this. And now he has his own crossbows here. Uh, man, the amount of speed that you need to dodge with the villagers and dodge with the crossbows there. That was crazy. Uh, let, let's see, though. He's, he's housed at the moment, so this has certainly delayed him. And Twig does have more crossbowmen. It's all about the micro here, guys. Whoa. What's this guy doing? <laughs> Why is there a militia? Okay, that's got to be a misclick of some kind. What's he doing here? 40 villagers for Daniel. It is 41 for Twig. So, behind all of this, Twig has gone to his second TC. So he's gained a slight vill lead. That's a lot of wasted wood. For Daniel. I, I think he needs a TC here. I really think he needs a TC here. Yep, he deletes that. TC. Perfect. Oh, he's housed, uh, but TC finishes. Alright, a bit rusty for him because he keeps getting housed and he's running out of pop space, but good defense. Since he has the hilt, I think we'll be fine. And I think that this will probably go to him. It's all about the small advantages that you can take. And Twig has built a siege workshop. It's a good move of Slavs. It's a very good move of Slavs. It's a good move when both players are going crossbow as well. So, slight, and I mean slight, eco lead for Twig in terms of numbers. He does have the faster farmers. Keep in mind that Chinese have cheaper techs, so I think that balances out. No ballistics for either player, so the crossbows will miss. And there is Maganel here, and Daniel sees it. Now the TC's up, but this is not ideal. Will he try and micro this Maganel down? You can tell he's thinking about it. Uh, he had a knight around here, so he might loop, loop to the right. He does not have his own Maganel. Seems like he's on the back foot, Daniel, doesn't it? Wow, he's getting chain barding though. And meanwhile, Twig is actually showing up to the gold with another batch of crossbows. The knight comes out with chain barding armor. We'll kill the crossbows. The villager goes down. The Maganel's here. This is some good stuff. This is a high level game. I'm loving this. 77 population for both. 
Daniel defends himself. His villagers on wood, though. One down. See, this is why ballistics is important. Those villas would have all died. <laughs> Those villas would have all died if uh, ballistics was in. Oh, and Daniel sends his crossbows out this way. So he deletes a hole in the wall. He sends his crossbows out this way. Twig has a big Maganel shot, though. Now, will the knights be enough to get in here? The knights success. The nice. The knight split was unsuccessful. Oh, and Daniel splits right into the shot. I'm not sure if Daniel, pre uh, if Twig predicted the split or what happened there, but that's a big boom. Ballistics, though, for Daniel. He does have knights with chain barding. He's making two stables. Twig definitely is in more control because his eco has been untouched. And he's go he'll micro his crossbows. He'll micro down the knight. And that's enough crossbows to kill just three knights. But his whole army could get trapped. Oh! That shot from Twig was so good. He saw this coming a mile away. That shot misses. That shot doesn't miss! Oh my goodness! The mangonels for Twig has... It's given him such a big lead. He's had so much control over this game, and right when it looks like it's getting bad, he gets a big Maganel shot to bail himself out. My goodness. The importance of Maganels, guys. I remember Twig could have built his own siege workshop, instead he opted for the TCs. Uh, or did I? I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm really I'm I'm I feel like an airhead at the moment. I might be misspeaking. And I second guess myself, like, did I didn't misspeak? Uh, Daniel needed his siege workshop earlier. Remember the relics. Remember the relics. That, that militia's out there, that's hilarious. Remember the extra golds. I'm assuming Twig will click up to the Imperial Age faster because of the Vil lead and the faster farming. But. Slavs, they can't go for Arbalest. They don't get Arbalest. They, they don't get Bracer. They, they can't continue with the same units that Twig is making. So he'll need a hard switch into Infantry and Siege, and that's not easy to pull off when Chinese are probably going to stick with what they're doing all game. So I, I think that Twig will need to go with Pikemen, which he's doing. Pikes, Siege, and Trebs in the next stage. So might as well start that now, hold that map control. That manga was huge. Huge Maganel shot. Daniel could get his own, though. What Daniel wants is a bit of map control before he gets to the Imperial Age. And Twig needs to hold his map control. Now, Daniel's golds are all over here, so they're all safe. Twig's golds are, are also safe. This hill is easy for Daniel to defend for now. I think that we might just see Twig stay at home. Uh, oh no! The militia got the assist on the monk kill. That's hilarious. Wait, he got the kill, didn't he? I'm gonna I'm gonna credit that to the militia, the one HP militia, which was a misclick. So listen, guys, if your mom and dad said you were a mistake, you can do great things in the world, just like that militia did. Oh my goodness, how heartwarming is that? Well, yeah, I think that Twig will wait for the Imperial Age, uh, build a castle on the hill, and then. Yeah, up to Imp. Uh, Daniel sees the crossbows. He sees the pikemen. Oh, fire. Fire. Ooh, he didn't shoot there. Yeah, this is tough for Daniel. He just doesn't have enough. Big shot, but he'll lose the Maganel. Yep, that's still worth it for Twig. All that Twig cares about is not losing the center of the map. <laughs> Look at the militia go! Go, Frankie! Go, buddy! Yes, he did it again! Who cares about the knight? The knight's cheating. Frank is the MVP. The little things in Age of Empires 2, guys. The little things. Hilarious. Hero militia. Notice the big difference in resources. Twig didn't make many knights. He didn't invest in many knight upgrades. Daniel had to. Daniel put hundreds of food, hundreds of gold into creating knights uh, and to getting them upgraded. So that's why he's not even close to clicking up to the Imperial Age. Twig 
he'll be there in a moment. He is building that that uh, castle on the hill. It does get complicated to push Chinese once they get mass Chukunu, though. And Daniel has one castle making Chukunu, and I imagine he'll castle here as well. In both areas, Daniel has a slight hill. So if, if Twig does send Trebs forward, the trebuchets won't be all that successful in killing the castles. So Daniel could certainly buy some time. Another good Mackinella shot for Twig. That has been the difference in this game. But you know what Twig's not doing? He's not taking the extra golds. We have Frank and Jim. They're protecting this gold. And then we have Bill. He's building the TC out here. A lot of gold secured and one relic for Daniel. Halberdier and capped ram is the choice for Twig. You cannot push Chinese Chukunu with rams. So he, he needs Trebs to back it up. He needs onagers. This will not be easy for him. Just forget about the crossbows now. The crossbows are not going to help Twig too much throughout the game. He won't upgrade them. It's all infantry and siege. These are some good players, guys. These are some good players. Daniel needs Imp. And he'll click up. All right, let's go. Let's go. This is awesome. Twig needs to snag these relics. There's one here and there's one here. I think the, the lack of scouting for Twig on the outer areas of the map could hurt him. But the micro's been better. Again, another well, good trade. And, and here it is now. He, wa he wants to force Daniel into repairs. He knows that Daniel needs his Chukanu. So he'll just protect his trap. He might even build a castle. Yeah, he'll build a castle here as well. This even further protects it. It's weird. It, it seems like Daniel's spreading himself out around the map. But... I'm not sure if he has the answers to what Twig has in the sensor yet. Now, if he finds the answer to this, if he delays his castle's death, if he can snipe these trebs then it's an instant lead for him, in my opinion. Oh god, Daniel. Oh god. There, we, We've seen this before. We've seen this before. He's out of- Oh, goodness. He's out of stone. He can't repair his castle. He thinks about microing it, and then he bails. This castle's gonna go down. He just built another one, didn't he? Because he had the stone. Yeah, he's placed another one. And because he placed that, he can't repair this one! And the Magano shot comes in! Daniel will micro! That's that's actually not bad. That that's actually not bad. It's 54 military versus 33 military. Twig will lose his trebs. Twig will definitely lose his trebs. Well, I mean Daniel has to attack them. Daniel did not attack them, but uh, Twig's trebuchets cannot push forward at least anymore. So Daniel will be in the Imperial Age now. He will get his upgrades, and it, he has a lot of Chukunu. This castle won't go down. Not not to two siege rams. There's Maganel's protecting it and the Chukanus will be here. Bracer, Arbalest, Chemistry, two man saw. Now I wonder if Twig, instead of trying to push up this hill, <clears throat> I wonder if he says, okay, this is gonna be complicated for me. Let's take the other areas of the map. And, and I think that's what he's doing. So now he'll try and take this gold. Still does not know about this one, but he'll find out in a moment as that monk goes out to scout the area. Daniel had both the extra golds, and he had the stone in the north. And he has two relics. The third is right there in the middle. This game is very close. And now Twig's going for Onager, which is pretty much what I expected. Uh, but I I'm not sure that Cavalier is, is the right move here. Yeah, he, he kills those villagers, but he needs to run away with his trebs yet again. And this time he will lose his trebuchets. So two trebs down. Daniel. Okay, one treb down. And Daniel is now prepping pikemen and heavy camel. It's crazy how many options Chinese have. Does he have elite chukunu? He doesn't. He doesn't have elite chukunu. Hmm. If it's cavalier and onager could be complicated still because while we know what the Mackinella shots can do the Onager shots are going to be even more devastating to Daniel where's my thank you man bible thump t90 dude but if the camels are in front 
Then the camels can snipe the onagers, and they're the counter to the cavalier. This is so fascinating. And Daniel sees his opponent has researched onager. He kills it. He will kill these rams, but what about this fight? Wow. Twig is playing so well defensively. He killed the trebuchets. Where's Frank? Uh... Oh no, he just died. Frank is dead. Sorry I missed it. We'll have to hold the funeral service later. We have to finish the game. Frank is gone. Gone from this cruel world. 65 military for both. Completely different compositions. They keep fighting over the extra golds. The relic in the middle is still up for grabs. Twig has more of the map though. Uh, he has well, like 60%-ish of the map. He doesn't know about the north. Oh, and, and Daniel's going to castle here so he can control that area. Really fascinating stuff. Well, the key for Daniel is to keep his castles up. He has to keep his castles up. Twig, it doesn't really matter all that much because he's not making his unique unit. But Twig will need it for Trebs, and, and here he comes now. He, he has known the castle is here for a while, so he rolls his trebuchets this way. And Daniel is just tracking this. He, he expects it. He realizes the danger. He has his two canoes, his, his camels, his arbalest all over here. And Twig has unpacked the trebs, and now he's firing on the castle. But meanwhile, this castle's up, and I feel like if Daniel gets a few Chukunu here and a few rams, he'll take this gold right back, and then he'll take this gold right back. This is the best game of the qualifiers for sure. Game one, qualifier between Twig and between Daniel. There's Onagers on the other side of the wood line. This is crazy. That's a lot of onagers, and there's a big shot coming in. Daniel just can't get to the onagers. He keeps trying with the camels, but the halberdiers are there. Twig has, has performed beautifully in Imperial Age, considering he doesn't have the, the he doesn't have the options and he doesn't have the mobility. He's done really well. What a sick game! And Daniel has to repair. He's out of stone soon. This hill could be the game, honestly. We still have the other area of the map. We're not sure how that's going to go, but if this castle goes down, that means that there will be one castle at home for Daniel to create Chukunu out of, and I'm not sure if that's enough. What? How? Blue's Eco is getting raided. Thank you. I actually, uh, I noticed that, and then I look at chat, and everyone's calling me blind. Sorry, I was too focused on the, the fight here. I mean, there's three different areas that players need to focus on. No wonder Twig didn't notice it. I think Daniel, if he buys 100 stone, he might save himself. It's so close! No! He can't save his castle. This is insane! I mean, meanwhile, Daniel, he actually he has a huge population lead. He'll take the gold lead. I just don't know if he can stop this composition. Twig, he has food income, a, a low amount of food income now, but he has some. Fortunately, his slab farmers, maybe he can come back because of that. He's making onagers. There's not many halbs in front anymore, though. There's not many cavalier. Daniel has 53 military. It is 48 for Twig. Twig has found this gold. He's lost this gold. This game is all over the place, man. Well... The concern for Daniel is just, can he get two canoe numbers up? Um, if he has to rely on Arbalest, then Seedram becomes very effective for Twig. Two canoe can kill Seedram. Uh, Ar Arbalest cannot. And... Oh my god! Oh my god! That's what I'm talking about, man. You can't lose these numbers, Daniel. You don't have the castles to produce the two canoe. Wow, what a game, what a game this is. So just sit back for a second and imagine that this is the main event. We don't know who the players are, and the skill level is probably even higher because we have the top 16 in the world. Like That's what this qualifier is giving us a taste of. Uh, it, I mean, it, it'll be crazy. I loved Hidden Cup 1, Hidden Cup 2 is going to be even better. 
This is just a qualifier, man. And I still can't really tell who's gonna win the game. Only thing I can tell you is is Daniel has the lead. I'm I'm questioning how well he'll be able to perform without the Chukunu, but he has 30 more military and he has 30 more vills. He seems to have forgotten about this gold, understandable with so much is going on, and he's starting to push Twig back. For really the first time, I mean, the raid doesn't count as a push, right? So this is the first time, and Twig just calls it. Twig's at 100 population? 100 population? Man, it was a combination of the hold from Daniel on the hill and the raid in the eco. Uh, crazy performance. That, that was awesome. That was all over the place. Daniel lost so many of his crossbows, so many of his Chukunu to raids. Ouch. I thought... I, I wasn't looking at Twig's point of view. I really felt like he would have been floating more res as Slavs. Because I think he was at, what, 110, 120 villagers before that raid came in? And that was that was definitely a fail on my part not to, to notice that. But I, I assumed he would float more resources and be able to, to get his population back up, but it just didn't happen. It's actually wood, believe it or not. He has food. He ended the game with a thousand food. It was actually wood that he lacked. He had gold as well. That was awesome, man. That was awesome. I think... Daniel will be very happy going into game two after getting that win. Because again, he is not the the favored player. He is the 12th seed player in the qualifier. Twig will get to use his home map next. 361 kills for Daniel. Uh, economically speaking, Twig had more. So this is why I expected Twig to have floating resources. I guess he did lose a lot of expensive units. He made a lot of Halbs that died. He made a lot of Cavalier that died. He, he lost Onagers, he lost Trebs, so kind of makes sense. He could have also sold some of that wooden food. But that was just a palisade wall on the right side of his base. They say you create your own luck. Daniel definitely created his own luck there to find that hole and raid the eco. The Chinese sieve is a good sieve. That was the first pick for Daniel, by the way. Twig's first sieve pick? In the draft was Slavs. The first one for Daniel was Chinese. So they, they went with presumably their favorite civilizations and Twig lost with his. So game two, uh, what's the home map again of Twig? It is Cross, okay. So Twig has Japanese, Berbers, Mongols, and Indians. And Daniel has Malians, Celts, Malay, and Huns. So I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that it will be Japanese for Twig. That's fairly common on any map that has fish. And then... Uh, probably Huns for Daniel. I mean, Huns can perform well. Uh, Celts can perform well. Malians can perform well. He has options. I think you go Huns because you can use more mobility on land. Huns... Uh, well, I'll get into it once we get into the game. Too many complex things to mention, but thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Crash. There's your thank you, man. Thank you for the five months. Hopefully you didn't leave this time. Crash messaged me and said, hey, you didn't thank me for a sub. And I, I normally get to it after games. So thank you, Crash, for the five. Good to have you. Amalas, thank you. Cotton, thank you. Karoo, uh, Helvner, and Giftslink. Thank you guys for the subs and resubs. Here we are. Oops, that's the wrong screen. Uh, and this is the right screen. Perfect. And Huns in Japanese it is. So we have game number two in a best of five qualifier between Daniel and uh, Twig. Twig is fourth seed in the 16-man qualifier, so he had better odds in Vegas for this, and he's lost the first game. Daniel performed really well. I think that the way he played the hills last game was intelligent with his castles, and uh, he had to save with a lot of options, and this time he does as well. So if you've never seen Cross before, there's four ponds on this map. There's ponds in the north, the south, the east, the west. There's plenty of fishing ships. And if you've never heard of Japanese before, the Japanese fishing ships are insanely strong. So you have to play out on land because it's a very open map, but you also need to prioritize the water for the economy aspect. The way I expect this to play out is Twig will go more for pond aggression because he should have an advantage on water, and he has less mobility on land. And Daniel will do his best on water, but he has to eventually shift to taking fights on land. Uh, now, there's a couple ways that can happen. 
both players are going to have a safe pond in the back. So you'll have tons of food in eco. You could go for scouts as hunts. Scouts into cav archers is fairly common. You could go knights. You don't necessarily need to go cav archers in the next stage, though they're cheap, because you have free food income in the back. I don't know what Twig can do on land to really catch up to the speed of Huns, so he'll probably wall a lot. And his base is quite open. Um, it's very open. His wood is safe on the back. It can't be ranged by anything, but it's not easy for him to wall this off. I would like to see Sneak Villagers. If Twig sends a Villager down here to take control of this pond, that's thousands of extra food for him. I'd like to see Daniel try and get there as well. We'll see a fight for this pond for sure. And then maybe even a sneak vill to the back ponds to kill fish. So does it make sense? I'm sure a lot of you have seen Cross before. But just remember Japanese is a slower sieve. But they have a better eco if they get the fish. Whereas Huns, they have more mobility on land. Daniel is... Oh, see they don't know where they're at, right? So he's trying to find the pond, and if you're lucky, you can actually find the Dockville. It's not going to happen for either player. Yep, Dock for both. Daniel needs to build his Dock. There we go. Unfortunately, Huns, you actually start with 100 less wood, so you get your Dock up slightly slower. But then you're not building houses throughout the game, so it's fine. It's fine. I like the wall off. This tells me that Daniel's playing super safe. It's such a small thing that doesn't matter, but this tells me that he's aware that Twig might be roaming around, and that he's mechanically sound. Oh no, I almost, did you see that? I almost jinxed him, and, and the pig almost killed a vill, he bailed on attacking it, because he realized it was going to be the north of the TC and it would be inefficient. That's pro stuff right there. <clears throat> well done. It's not easy to do. When you're attacking the boar and it starts running an odd direction, to just stop like that, wait for it to come under and finish it off, take some patience. You're right, Huns and Japanese has shown up a lot in the qualifiers. I mean, it makes sense because on these hybrid maps, you always have that fish focus and then that, that um, dynamic focus, I guess. Huns are very dynamic and versatile. So it makes sense. Japanese, you pick them for the fishing bonus. Huns, you pick them because they can do almost anything. So I actually... I don't love Twig's map, but I love how he's handled it. You can either wall very, very uh, close to your town center and play safe. Or you can go aggressive and try and wall this whole map. And that's just not going to happen for him this game. So instead, he can wall here. And then he's safe. I like it. Okay, so Daniel has found Twig. Twig has not found Daniel yet. That's actually quite a big deal. Because he needs to think about what pond he might go after. He's checking this out. He's looking for a Daniel villager, thinking that he might have a TC on this side. I don't know, though. He, he saw this gold. He really shouldn't be going to the north if he saw a neutral gold. He should, should probably be going this way. Hard to say, though. Both players on the way to Feudal Age. It is four fishing ships for Daniel. It will be four in a moment for Twig. And is this Vil doing what I think he is? Just wondering if the, uh, Daniel will build a barracks and try and build a stable then and go scouts, or if he'll go for a second dock in the south. Twig is going for a barracks. So no two pond action just yet. Daniel just got the wood for his barracks. He will... Are you going to build it? He'll build it here. Okay. Perfect. A little bit slow. A little bit slow. I think the barracks will be up after he hits Feudal. Oh, but look at this. This villager is spotted. This might confuse Twig. I think Twig spotted that. Man at arms for Twig. So it's almost like the opening for every Japanese versus Scouts matchup on Arabia, except for there's a fish boom behind it. So you can't do as much damage to economies because part of the economy is safe. And oh, Daniel's gone for some crazy walls out here. This protects his pond in the back. Both Scouts fighting. 
And Twig winning. And Daniel will run back. Has to be said, Daniel's map is way better for walling in this game. <laughs> way better than Twig's. But if you compare it to game one, Twig's base was fully walled real early. So, and that wasn't enough for Twig. I think what Twig would be able to do is take this hill and still have a very good push in this game. If he takes his hill, there's not much Huns can do to, uh, to, well, to push back up the hill. And there's also a gold out here as well. As well as the neutral, there's a lot of map control to be had. Oh yeah, I can change the graphic settings to high. Let me just watch the fight. Because Daniel is trying to snag Twig Scout. He wants it. He knows it's there. But he also wants to go to Twig's base. Uh, Twig could go through this way. Daniel will wall it off though. Yeah, I forgot about that. There we go. Players will actually play on low graphics in tournaments. A lot of them do, so they can see the elevation. Which makes sense. We don't need to see it as much. Early archery range for Daniel. It is five fishing ships for both. Twig realizes there's a gap here. Oh, don't tell me that. No. Oh my goodness. That that could have all... <laughs> that could have all gone downhill for Daniel if these units would have slid in. And on the other side, Twig is walled as well. So it's almost like walling in Age of Empires is very important. Imagine that. How you wall, how early you wall, how much you wall. Just ask Fatslop. He won't be playing in this tournament because we don't have Black Forest. <laughs> Man, how many times are going to make that joke? <laughs> I think that's five times today. I'm going to make that joke a lot throughout this tournament, I think. Oh, 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 this is what I mentioned earlier. Daniel is definitely trying to either sneak a dock up, or he's trying to go to the north, and the wolf is attacking him. Wait, what? What happened to... Never mind, it's fine. Did I start this game with Daniel in blue after Daniel was in red in the first game? Oh no, the wolves are getting Daniel as well! Save him! What? Do we call our Twitch what? Okay, so we'll stick with Daniel Blue for now. I'm sorry, I didn't even think about that when the game started. But the wolves went after the vill, and Daniel has saved his villager. And that that's a... Oh, oh, oh god, oh god. Oh god, there's another one! He's fine. Oh, there's another one too. Man, the wolves are protecting Twig here. Really nice save. That is not easy to do. And, oh, Twig has the pond in the south. Twig has two ponds now. He is behind in villagers, though. Hmm. Bad fight for Daniel, but at least he knows that Twig has his army here. Will Daniel see the dock? Or Twig, rather. Will Twig see Daniel's dock? I think it's intentional to have one fishing ship on this fish. Just for the scouting. And look, he sees it. Now, guys, he's on his way to Castle Age. I'm really curious to see how quickly he makes a fire galley. If the dock goes up, and he doesn't realize, he could lose a few fishing ships. But if he realizes now, he can make a fire galley, and this is no problem. Because his fishing ships have so much armor, so much HP... And now Daniel will be up right behind him to the next stage. And I believe Daniel will continue with archers. Yep. Daniel has also docked the north. So, uh, two and a half pawns right now for Daniel. New TV show, two and a half pawns. He has two and then half. It's more like two and a quarter. Okay, Twig notices. Twig notices. Twig is, is making fire galleys. But it is two docks here for Daniel. So he might not make many archers, actually. He has to choose how he spends his wood and his gold. That villager will just sneak on by. Daniel knows that Twig is in the south now. And she is going to hide. <laughs> That's funny. So... One fire galley versus one will be two. Mining camp? Okay, this guy is crazy. He's done it all. 
He survived wolf attack. He's he's mining in enemy territory. Nine fishing ships for Daniel. Daniel has the lead economically for sure. I mean, despite not having Japanese fishing ships, um, he he has the lead with fishing ships, and and Twig just just needs to make more, of course, but he might not be able to do so because his pond, this pond that was supposed to be safe, was not protected. Now Twig is going for crossbows on land, so we have the water element in four different ponds. We have the land eco, and then we have the the land military. Uh, Daniel reacts a bit slowly to this as he's getting Bodkin Arrow and Crossbow himself. Uh, wow. Incredible pickoffs for Twig. This is crazy! One, two, three, four, five kills already? Uh, Daniel will be able to take the fight, and now it'll be even, but that was really well done from Twig. I'm a bit torn on the water aggression from Daniel. I think maybe if his dock wouldn't have been spotted, it makes sense to invest a lot there. But maybe not so much if your opponent's Japanese and they spot you. Because if they spot you, even if you have slightly more ships, you're probably not going to kill many of the fish. Let's look at the land economies. Cow archers here for Daniel. He... Did he build a tower? Somewhere? Oh! Whoa! He built a tower on the gold? So no wonder he doesn't have a second TC. He built a sneaky tower up here. Well, well, that this villager is the real MVP, and I, I'm not just saying that to say that. This guy has done everything. He went for the sneaky docks. He now has towered here. Um, he's gonna. Oh, he's even survives. He's a ninja. He's a ninja. So Daniel is. He has most of the map at the moment, guys. He's dictating the pace of this game. Look at the farm eco for Twig. That looks bad. Twig doesn't have a second TC. Twig has to build the siege workshop. So he's going for siege defense, and I think this plays out well for Daniel now. Remember, he has the mobility of the cav archers. Oh, you need to deal with this tower? That's great. I'll go to the left side, because I know you have a wood line there. With my speedy cav archers, and the crossbows I have remaining. Meanwhile, I'll attack you on water. I mean, Daniel is doing everything. Twig is in trouble. Twig is in big trouble. He's behind in vills, he's behind in fish. He's behind in military on land. And Daniel, like all American players, we are, he's a fantastic Hun player. <laughs> we, we love our Hun wars in the States. <laughs> so you, you should be able to mass these cav archers. And there's not a lot of space in here for Daniel. I really feel like he didn't take advantage of the fact that he had Japanese fish. He didn't try and fight for ponds. He tried to fight on land with Huns. And I, I don't know if that's the best play. I need to check Daniel's eco, though, because if he doesn't have a second TC, yeah, he still doesn't. He won't grow in a build lead. All right, now that armor's coming in for the skirmishers, the cav archers can't fight them, and neither can the crossbows. Armor is huge. But I saw knight upgrades, and I see a siege workshop for Daniel. And this tower finally goes down. Uh, wow, big demo there. I think Frankie is finally going to die. Yep, he's dead. He did a good job, though. So knights and cav archers for Daniel. Sees the skirmishers, makes Maganels, makes knights. Just perfect reaction. And now Twig has to chase, and Twig sees the Siege Workshop. So, this this is tough for Twig now. Any fight that Daniel does not like, he can leave, because he has the speed. Oh, and the fish have been cleared out! The demo must have been the breaking move on water. So the demo's cleared out, or they weakened three ships. Twig finished them off. The fishing ships will die here. So now it's 10 fish versus 2. It's 53 vills. Verse 49, after this vill gets picked off. Never mind, make it 50. And there's knights here, there's cab archers here. It's 92 population versus 74. Is this going to be the first upset of the qualifiers? Kind of seems like it. Daniel's all over the guy. He's sending three crossbows here. He has knights and cab archers and a Maganel here. He has cab archers here. 
He's everywhere. He has five different groups. And he's going to dock the south. This is perfect play from Daniel. This seems over. Total domination from Daniel. He's everywhere. Special Brew <clears throat> says, how is this an upset? Well, because Twig has played more competitive tournaments, he's hit higher rating than Daniel ever has, and because there's a uh, seed difference. Not saying that Daniel doesn't have the quality. I don't, I don't think there's a possible way for Twig to come back here unless he's floating a lot of food. 800 wood. Yeah, Twig has hit 2k4 multiple times. The only reason I responded to you is because the only time I've seen chat from you throughout this cast is when you've said something negative about my commentary. So I got a bit salty. I responded. We're good. We're good. You're right, though. You're right that Daniel certainly has a potential. That's all. Daniel has not added extra TCs, which is a bit worrying for me. And oof, Twig gets a Maganel shot there. Three farm eco. Has the fish, though. I think if I could make one like critical comment about Daniel's play is that he didn't add a second TC. But apart from that, it's been perfect. And, you know, arguments can be made. He wouldn't have as much military if he added the town centers, and he'll win this fight. He'll win this fight. Twig does not have room to breathe. He doesn't have farm space. He's all this wood. Where's he going to build farms? It'll be ranged. He doesn't have fish anymore. Four ponds for Daniel. He had to build walls behind his walls, behind his TCs, man. <laughs> Twig is catching up in the vill count, though. Now, I don't know how efficient the villagers are. Man, Twig is getting bailed out time and time again with these Maganel shots. You normally are not going to get good Maganel shots against Cav Archers. Cav Archers are mobile. They have more HP. They can avoid those things. What's up with the stable placements for Daniel? There's some random stables. This is like my farms. Jeez. All right, but he's getting chain barding now. Okay, he has added a second town center. Now, he doesn't have a lot of farms. So I think he'll need that. The fishing ship food eco is good, but it eventually wears out. And again, Twig is going to get a big shot here, I think. Oh, Daniel dodges. Daniel micros. Repairs. One for one. And... Ooh, wow, that was close. Nice micro, Twig. Twig is holding on, guys. He's holding on. He's been a consistent 20 population behind. It's just funny how ra these random blue dots are all over here. Like, if if I would have kept Daniel in the red, it'd be like the map got chicken pox. All these random blue buildings. We have a tower now? That's kind of weird. And a stable right next to it? Okay. Hmm. Looking a bit interesting now. Another Maganel lands. And another shot will come in. Twig is holding on, guys. Barely. Barely. He needs this wood. So the tower doesn't exactly range the wood, but once this wood's gone, this wood's denied and this wood's denied. And I don't think Daniel plans on ever going to the Imperial Age in this game. I think he wants to finish Twig and Castle Age. He's doing it. He's doing it. The fires are even ranging some of the villagers here. We can make a few galleys. One for one with the Maganels. More knights are here. More Maganels will come out. This could be the end, and it is the end. Twig calls the GG. Twig, I don't think he went with the right game plan. I think that, I think that he had to fight for pawns earlier. Um, going man-at-arms is not necessary. If you expect walls on this map, and, and you are going to see the eco is walled, and that's pretty much what happened. Uh, he went for man at arms and ended up attacking walls on a stable. I, I genuinely feel like uh, you send 
The villager down here nice and early, if you're Twig. You take two pawns, and then you hold, and then you, you build up towards crossbows in the next stage. But at least at that point, you have a lead on water. Um, if Daniel tries to fight you on water, uh, then... Well, then he's going to lose, normally. Normally, but uh, obviously that was not the case here. Daniel's sneak worked. Daniel took all the pawns. Daniel played better on land. He's just been a better player today. And Twig has come very close in both games. And we will now go to Daniel's home map, and we're going to see a Gold Rush game. Gold Rush sounds awesome to me. I wasn't expecting someone to pick that as their home map. Because it can be a bit risky. Sometimes the gold generation in the middle is like a bit more to the left or the right. But there's the KD. Daniel has 80 kills. He had way more economy. It was specifically the gold, the stone, and the wood. Food count was rather even. This is exciting, man. This is exciting. What's exciting is that Daniel looks like a man in form. Uh, when he had the crossbows and the cav archers and the mackinels all in different groups, that was impressive. When is Jordan playing? Jordan will play tomorrow. Jordan will play John Slow tomorrow. All right, Daniel's up 2 0. Yeah, so I, I need to look at the ratings. Um, just back to what we were saying. Now, rating does not really mean that much past a certain point. Oh, just heard my own voice. That was weird. Um, Twig was mid 2K4. Okay, at the moment, he's just under 2K4 after losing a few games. Um, Daniel is... The highest I've seen him was below 2K, 2K4. And I think he took a giant break from the game, but he hasn't been around as much as Twig has. We're counting over the last few years. So for me, I feel like Twig obviously hasn't performed well in big events, but we haven't seen Daniel playing in big events to really know like how he'll be able to perform. And, and here, here he is, Daniel in the blue. Okay, are we switching him back or are we keeping him on blue now? I, I, think we have, I think we have to keep him on blue now. We don't want to make it confusing again. So we'll keep him in blue. He's playing as the Celts. And then we have Berbers. And... Celts vs. Berbers is not what I expected on this matchup. So Gold Rush, Berbers for Daniel, or Celts for Daniel, and Berbers for Twig. Uh, most of us probably know Gold Rush. It's a map that we all started playing the game on. Uh, we weren't any good, but we'd run out to the middle before even taking our starting golds and mass probably trash units, you know, let's be honest, because we were, we were noobs. Uh, it's a classic map. There's some wolves out here that you could encounter. We might see more T90 woos. Oh, there's jags, actually. All right, so that's... <laughs> that's actually really bad for Twig. That's right next to him. But anyways, uh, the main focus of this map is the hill in the center, the area in the center with the gold. And the gold's kind of spread out here. There's a gold that's closer to Daniel. There's a pile of gold that's closer to Twig. So it seems like a fair generation. Sometimes you'll find all the gold on the left or all the gold on the right, which is why I said it's a bit of a risky move for a home map. But you get seven tiles of gold to each player. So there's four tiles here for Twig, and then there's three tiles. He can wall here. Normally it's an easy wall off on Gold Rush. And then for Daniel, he has his four tiles here and his uh, three tiles there. Again, easy wall off on the front. I could open up with Man-at-Arms. He could go for a Drush. There's high chances for a Jaguar rush, because there's even Jaguars next to his pig here. What's going on with the Jaguar generation? Like, these Jags might even attack his, <laughs> his uh, boar villager. I think it will. I think that one Jaguar will chase if he goes up for the pig. But uh, if it happens, the Jaguars actually block the boar from attacking your vill, so he should be fine. As long as he doesn't try and build a house out here or something. Ooh. Both scouts fighting. Twig has the lead in the HP. Daniel will get the hill. And the hill again? Nope. Alright, that was a mistake. Daniel needs to leave. <laughs> Daniel needs to get out of here. He was delaying the boar for Twig. And Twig's pig is on the other side of the wood line, so he'll probably need the scout to assist that one in. I like the horseshoe of grass in the cruel desert. I don't know why that was blocked, Melty, but yeah, it's it's nice look. 
It's a nice look. Daniel needs to keep this scout alive. I guess he'll just run around. Uh, so for Berbers, I would say probably Scouts then. Scouts into Knights, and then Celts. Oh, it's happening! It's happening! Oh my god, that's so sad and unfortunate. What on earth? Poor Daniel, man. <laughs> the element's against him. And I thought he shot the boar with a TC. He was shooting the Jaguars with a TC. All right, he loses a villager. Ouch, his home map has just abused him. They'll have to rebound from that. He brings in his pick. That's weird. We'll have to take a look at that. Like, the, jag the Jaguar spawn is really weird. I don't know how the map works. I'm not a map scripter. Um, this is a version of Gold Rush that has been seen in tournaments before. But I don't know where the Jaguars are placed. I know it's normally not in the center. Like, maybe it's the elevation? Maybe the Jaguars are normally placed near the hills? Because... Yeah, I don't know. It's hard for me to say. But either way, that's unfortunate for Daniel. He can't call a restart. And he'll come back to his base, bring in his turkeys, and push in his deer. Um, so Celts... It could be a Drushfast Castle civilization, but I think nowadays you won't see Drushfast Castle often on this map. So... Maybe instead they'll go for uh, Man at Arms. A good reason to go for Drush would be is if he doesn't have the food to click up, and he is struggling now. Even the deer not cooperating for him. Mm hmm. I think we'll have just enough. He needs to drop off with berries. These villas probably have about 50. Oof. That's that's rough. That slows down his uptime. What's funny is, Twig is actually drushing, and he's going drush fast castle. Not what you would expect. And he's running right by the Jaguars. Oh my god. There's so many. He could get three, make that seven, make that uh, nine. That would be totally worth it. Just send one militia through there, and lure them over to Daniel's base. So the idea behind a drush, guys, is to give yourself time to wall, and... Twig has certainly done that. Just kind of peculiar to see Drush FC, because most Drush FCs are into archers. He could go crossbows with Berbers, but you would expect the cheap knights. Daniel doesn't have scouting intel, because his scout had to come back home. His scout's weak, remember? So it, it all stems from a mistake to attack early on. He was too aggressive. And now what's the response going to be for him? He doesn't know his opponent. Okay, he knows now his opponent's walled. Hmm. So there could be a couple things that's going through his mind. I mean, option number one is I have to go forward right now and tower the guy. I see his stone is forward. We need to tower him. He won't be able to counter tower. Uh, the, the second thing that might be coming through his mind is, okay, this is actually a man at arms rush and he just is here early. So he'll figure out that's not the case here in a moment, once Twig doesn't hit Feudal. I think that that's that's good for Twig. I think that Daniel needs to go forward. The longer he waits, the more complicated he makes this for himself. Picked off the scout. He actually cancelled the man-at-arms upgrade. And he's building farms instead. Okay, maybe he'll go for the eco approach and just wall? We actually saw it earlier on in the day. I, I know that everyone wasn't here, but we casted uh, John Slow and Dobbs. And one player w went for exactly what Twig is doing here. Uh, he went for Drush, full wall, and then nothing. In hopes of fast castling. Oh, Twig is on stone? Don't tell me he wants camel archers. All right, I'll keep you updated on that. But anyway, so that's what happened. And in that game, had John Slow gone forward, which we had discussed, it would have been an excellent decision. <laughs> uh, you know, he's coming forward now, Daniel. But to me, this is a minute and a half, two minutes too late. Because now Twig can build counter towers. But still, if your opponent is trying to go for their unique unit out of their castle, it's not a bad idea to force them into counter towers. Thankfully... Daniel did not run into these Jaguars, because I just feel bad. 
So Daniel knows this is a fast castle build. He wants to tower here. I don't think he expects there to be stone miners. So he towers here. That's a weird tower. Hmm, I mean... It might kill a villager? Almost seems better to me long term to tower somewhere where your opponent has walled and try and break in. I did not expect this. Twig is going to go fast castle, camel archers. Wow. Uh, that's new. Drush FC, camel archers. Breaking the meta here. All right. I'm not saying camel archers are bad, and I'm not saying Drush FC is bad, because Twig is is going to be in Castle Age light years ahead of Daniel, but it's kind of a surprise. He chose Berbers as one of his sieves, so maybe he felt like this is the strategy that can work for this map. Yeah, this is good for Daniel. Try and delay as much as humanly possible. Drush, F Drush FC? Camel Archers uh, flow? It's pretty uncommon. I can't tell you the last time I've seen Drush FC Camel Archers because I don't think I've ever seen it. I remember when, when people first realized that Camel Archers were insanely good and they would always go Camel Archers. I remember that phase. But nowadays with the cheap knights and camels, that's normally what you'd see. So you'd see an opening with scouts into uh, like knights and skirms. All right. So the house gets battered down. That's There's still another house there. Okay, Flo. I'll check it out, man. I'll check it out. Thanks. There's the castle on the front. So, so Twig's going for a siege workshop to take down the towers. He's making a castle, which can make camel archers. I don't think Daniel's eco was all that good behind this. Still only 400 food is Celts. Ugh. So he needs to get started, get to Castle Age. Now, Daniel, there's really no pressure on him. If you're two games up, if you lose this, you still have many opportunities. So I don't know what his mindset is at the moment, but if I were him, I'd just say, listen, you know, even if things aren't going as I had planned in this game, it's fine. We'll just try and address the situation as it comes our way. Don't freak out. For Twig, you're kind of kind of freaking out a little bit. Like, man, I, I'm i fourth seed in this tournament. And I got wrecked last game. Game one, I was close and lost. So he might be a bit frustrated. Maybe not even nerves, but just frustration. That's a weird lumber camp to build for Daniel. <laughs> I guess he didn't expect to... Uh, he, he did not expect... There would be a Maganel, but could have built it over here instead, you know? Here come the Camel Archers. Daniel will be in Castle Age at the 22nd minute. Uh, he's being attacked by yet another Jaguar. But this would be a good idea to tower this woodline. He does see there's a Lumber Camp here. Oh, could he? He could potentially kill the Mango with the Scout. Or at least be extremely annoying. Annoying is good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Look how many villas had to come over here to address this. I love it. Okay, the scout goes down. Tower's going up. That won't pay off right now, but it could pay off later. And Twig has his camel archers knocking on the door. They can't get through. They can sit underneath the tower. That's the play here. Sit underneath the tower so you can shoot the villagers. Daniel needs to either build, build another tower or he needs to just leave the stone. And he does without losing a villager. Nice stuff. Oh, it seems like he's prepared for this. What do you do as Kelts here, though? You, do you go offensive, Maganels, and try and pressure the wood line? Really, really weird. He's keeping his towers up. You don't really need anything defensively in Daniel's position, at least not yet, because the Camel Archers aren't in mass. Dingy wingy. This, yep, this is qualifiers, man. Welcome back. Yeah, this is qualifier. It's been really a really good qualifier so far. I mean, despite 
despite the uh, the score, the game's been really entertaining for me. Yeah, so there's a siege workshop here. So Daniel wants to pressure from behind Twig's base. And then a monastery at home. Interesting. Well, eventually, players will run out of gold. This gold is actually gold that Twig can't get right now. He's about halfway through this four tile of gold, so we need to get to this. There's not much Twig can do to stop these towers. He sees the towers are up. He'll just lose his Camel Archers to towers, and he could lose his Camel Archers to Maganellis as well. He's doing what he can forward. He's delayed the stone. He's delayed the farms. This is a fascinating game. I'm really curious how Daniel plays this. Boom! This tower stays up. He kills the Maganel from Twig. And now Twig's making a stable for a night or two. Uh-oh. Yeah, and Twig has to run away as another tower goes up. It, it's so fascinating to me because this is supposed to be Gold Rush. The focus is supposed to be on the center, but after Twig has surrendered full map control with a strategy, uh, Daniel has taken the map control and he's pressuring from behind the guy's base. Now, as I say that, uh, Twig is running forward. Now he's getting a taste of the Jaguars, so he'll lose a villager to that. And... Uh, Oh, the Camel Archer! This is amazing! The Camel Archer is is getting them all! Daniel, notice this and take it to the gold, my friend! Take it to defend your base! Oh, Twig is going to build a castle here. Okay, that's actually quite a big move. That means the castle will shoot the tower. That means the castle can shoot the wall and the Camel Archers can get in. Oh, and meanwhile, there's a knight over here. Will the knight kill the Mangonel? Oh, there's a Repairville? This is going to be so close, because the Repairville can't reach. Oh my goodness, he kills the Maganel. This is good for Twig. This is good for Twig. And I think the Camel Archer just died for Daniel. I don't know what you do as Celts against this. I think the only thing you can do is defend, build a castle at home, and then treb this back an imp. But that means that he will not be getting to the center anytime soon. Really fascinating style of play. I think the Camel Archer, it takes some time to get rolling, but once you get a big ball of them, they're a very difficult unit to deal with, especially Celts. Celts don't have Bracer, they don't have the best Skirmishers. They would need their Onagers, but Onagers are expensive. Still though, good thinking from Daniel. He knew that if the tower went down, that was acting as part of his wall, so he needed to wall behind, he did. She pays the price for it. Oh, man. He's researching guard tower. I would be tempted to build guard towers at home, but if you build guard towers at home, then you won't have the stone for the castle later. So Daniel's in kind of a pickle. He, he can't do anything but defend. Yeah, there are some towers going up at home now. I guess he has to. It's either guard towers or lose his eco. Two towers here. A twig will get in, kill three villagers before the towers are completed. These things are so tanky, he can kill more. Wow. So a vill lead for twig who has less TCs. Twig is on one TC, right? One town center and he has a vill lead because of this aggression. This is so, so good from twig. I didn't expect it. I don't think Daniel expected it. Or at least Daniel was unable to counter it. What? How did... Daniel found this random stone up here? What? That's crazy. Well, great scouting from him. That's surprising, man. <laughs> found that random stone. I was thinking, what is that blue blob? Hey, so... I see what's going on in the Twitch chat. Let's just chill out, okay? Let's talk about the game. Make it easy. Make it real easy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if Daniel can push this back. You can't ram push it because, well, the lack of gold. And because one or two Mackinels behind the castle is an easy way to protect that from, from taking down your castle if you're twig. Um, at the same time, I guess... 
the strat or the goal for him is to get food eco and and go imp but it's 20 military versus 3 it's not looking good I like the fact he has extra stone because he can't take this one on the front and that's so important for him but even the vills that Daniel does have are not very efficient and Twig is splitting armies he's on two different sides Oh, loses a camel archer but he kills a monk the fact that Daniel has to use monks to convert a ranged unit is just its a sign of how bad things are for him right now. Now what does Twig decide to do? <laughs> As he's meeting the Jaguars now. Um, does he try and go to the Imperial Age? I'm not sure if Imp gives you all that much right now. But then again, I think that the more time you give Daniel the more potential Daniel has to come back as Celts. I think priority shifts to the towers that are at the back of his base. He sniped those villagers nice and easy. Now he can use the battering rams to kill all of that. I don't know, guys. I mean, I have loved Daniel's play in this game. I'm just... I'm looking for answers for him, and we can see everything. I'm not sure there's an easy way back into this. Okay, there's his castle. The only way this isn't over is if somehow... Uh, uh, that's a forward castle, isn't it? It is. It, the only way this isn't over is if Daniel imps and goes for Halberdier and Siege Ram. But he doesn't have the economy for it. And another castle will go up in space. It's two TCs for Twig, so when he's creating out of them, he'll he'll even grow and build lead, I think. Because Daniel, while he's had more TCs, he hasn't been able to create from them. And, okay, Daniel sees this. He's placing a guard tower to deny this. Twig, where are your camel archers? Your camel archers can save the day here. They were out of position. Alright. Well, the tower is not going to be denied. Will the castle be denied? There's a Maganel there as well. The castle is at 80 some percent. Yep, the castle goes up. I think Daniel calls a GG after this. Really good play from Twig to get back into this series. I mean, now that the castle's up, the Camel Archers can run right in. I don't think you need that castle if you're in Twig's shoes. You already have one. You're already controlling the center. It's fine. Might be better to go to food and gold. Daniel continues to fight. Daniel continues to fight. He, he probably will lose these resources eventually. Daniel? So you see how Twig has built two castles. Or, or sorry, three castles. And he has 400 stone in the bank. That means a lot of villagers Next that could have been collecting food and gold have been on stone. So he's had more villagers, but they've kind of been on the wrong thing. It's the right thing if this castle gives him something, and, and it's done some damage, sure. But my point is, is that Daniel now, he has had a lot of food and gold income, despite having less villagers. And he, he has clicked up to Imp. So there is an opportunity for him, because he sorted out his economy. With Twig's position, he should close this game out, but that's only if he can get his economy on track. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> Man! I just gave you a chance for the first time in a while, Daniel, and now you call the GG. Well played. Yeah, 60 vills for Daniel, 82 for Twig. Uh, Twig had all the golds. Uh, that was that was a strategy that I didn't expect. I'll have to speak to Daniel afterwards and see if he expected it. But well played. So, I think now, as we move on to game four, this becomes possibly the most exciting game we've seen in the qualifiers so far. Because the qualifiers uh, have all been good. And every single game has been good on Cup. And that'll be our next map. Uh, players probably never played this much. Uh, I don't think players have developed strategies for this yet. But it's been my favorite game of every single series so far, this Cup map. Uh, 48 kills for Twig. 34 units lost. Now, I did see the horse collar at the end. <laughs> That's why I didn't have the food. He actually had the same amount of food as Daniel, but he had better map control on a map where you have to have map control for the gold. Perfect. Okie doke. 
So, uh, the next game, game number four, is another opportunity for Daniel to close this out. The civilizations they have are, let's see, Daniel has Malians, which is a great civ for this, and he has Malay. Hmm, I think he'll go Malian, because he might want to save Malay for Bay, which is more of a, I mean, it's another water-focused map, the final game, if it happens. Twig has Indians. Oh, God, is he going to make the mistake? He might, and he has Mongols. Okay, so the reason I freaked out at Indians is because Cup has shorefish, or not shorefish, sorry, it actually has salmon in the center of the map, and players are so used to these hybrid maps where villagers collect shorefish faster with Indians, so they think that if you pick Indians, it's always best. It's not. I've tested it. It's not. Okay? <laughs> um, I remember MVL playing his first test match on the, the Hidden Cup map Cup, and he goes, oh, let's test Indians. And then at the, after a 13-minute game where he died, he goes, okay, Indians aren't good. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, this has been a fun series, guys. One year of tolerating T90 dad jokes. It ain't all bad, though, T90 love. Well, I'm getting better then, I guess. If you're tolerating it, not hating it, I think I'm I'm getting better. Thank you, guys, Graham. That gold badge looks freaking awesome. Thank you. Uh, Jets, welcome back for four. It's perfect. Jets four cup, and he has four months. Thank you, Tom. Welcome back, man. Thank you for the nine months. Uh, we had Herger Brand with a new sub. We had one control or in control with the prime sub. Thank you, Ar Archuk, and uh, Cry is. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for the love. <clears throat> I really do appreciate that you guys are having discussions about pollution and politics and economy. That's cool. Like, I don't want... I want people to have opinions on things in life. I want people to have strong convictions and values. That's good. But let's talk about Age of Empires 2 for me. Give me that, please. Thank you. Makes life easier a lot. Makes life a lot easier for everyone who comes here for that. People do not come to my stream to talk about things that they're always hearing about in real life. People come here to have a good time, relax, and talk about Age of Empires 2. So thank you. Razorblade. Razorblade stepping up, man. <laughs> setting, setting the pace. Thanks, Razorblade. All right. Let's go. Malay and Mongols. Okay, thank God. Thank God. Twig went for Mongols. Mongols is a really good sieve for this. Uh, so, in the event that Twig wins, Twig will have... Am I getting this right? He'll have Indians for the final game? He will have Indians for the final game. So, that's kind of peculiar. Um, but anyway, so, we need to take this one game at a time. This map is called Cup, and this is a new map for Hidden Cup 2. Once again, this is a best of five qualifier. This is round one of a qualifier, so whoever makes the finals of this qualifying bracket will be the final two spots in the main event. Uh, we have Malay for Daniel, and it is Mongols for Twig. And I recognize a lot of you probably haven't seen this map yet, so yet again, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll give you guys an idea of what's different. So you, you have standard sheep, so it's still eight sheep. You have standard gold, so a main gold, and then two four tile golds. And then you have standard stone, so luckily that's not very different. That'll be the same on both sides. Uh, the deer are rather pushable. And then, if you want more food, there's options in the center. So there's an area here on water where you could dock, or you could build a mill and collect the salmon. And there's an area on the left where you could dock, or build a mill and collect the salmon. Uh, so, as I said just a moment ago, collecting the salmon with fish, with villagers, sorry, is not the play. Uh, no matter how you test it, it's not good. I test it with Japanese. I tested it with Persians, where you get more wood at the start, and you can build the mill right away, and justify a lumber camp and everything else. It's not good. It's fast food income, but then your mill needs to be relocated pretty quickly, because salmon only have 225 food, and uh, it's, it's just not as good as a standard start. What I do think is good is prioritizing water, and how players will do that is up to them. Uh, if you dock on the left, you have more space, 
If you dock on the right, it's closer and you kind of cover more of the space in between you and your opponent. So, you know, you can make arguments for either. And I have seen a completely different style from every player that's played this in the qualifiers. So I think that it'll be fun to see how, how the meta develops. One thing that's worth pointing out is you can't cross here. These pawns are split up. So if you make a demo here and you go, oh, there's crossbows running around the left, you can't explode them because this cannot be crossed. All right. So it's really exciting. It's really exciting. I think that Mongols are good, though, because there's so much hunt around. So you advance faster to the next stage. Um, well, you, you can afford to click up earlier because you get the food quicker. Uh, Malay are a sieve that advances faster to the next stage. They advance 80% faster to the next stage. So maybe Malay is the counter to Mongols because, sure, they don't collect food fast like Mongols, but they can get the same amount of food a little bit later and be up in no time. It's funny, so salmon was added as the fish. It's actually really good from a balance perspective. Because if it was the marlin, it'd be 350 food. And 350, you could justify, you know, building mills on and and uh, going for more water aggression, I suppose. <laughs> so salmon is the meme, because I always eat salmon. And, you know, everyone on the stream knows that. And I think it started off with salmon because of the meme. But it's it's very fitting, I think. For the map. Okay, so there's the barracks. So that tells me Daniel is not going to dock. And I guess Twig isn't going to either. Is Tato around? <laughs> uh, Tato said when watching a set of games yesterday, why is no one docking? So once again, different styles. If you dock, you slow down your land attack. And so I guess that Daniel's thinking of more of land aggression. Uh, no, they're not technically shorefish because shorefish have 200. No, shorefish have 200. I think salmon is the default amount of fish. Um, or sorry, 225 is the default amount of fish you get from salmon. I think so. I don't actually know that. You can actually change the food amounts. So if I wanted to change that, I could, but I don't see any reason to. Look at Daniel, the sheep thief. Who is this, MBL? Oh, wait. This isn't the main event. We know it's Daniel. <laughs> nice job, man. Stealing food from Mongols? Good stuff. See how easy it is to wall up? It's very easy to wall up. And Daniel is actually drushing, guys. This is not a Feudal Age Man-at-Arms attack, this is a Drush. Funny enough, Daniel was watching the set between Lix and Stark this morning on my stream. He was in the chat. Uh, and I, I don't want to spoil how the whole game went. You should watch it. It was pretty sweet. But one player did go for a Drush. And I'll have to ask him afterwards, because he's on the stream pretty often, if he did that because of what he saw earlier. Or if you felt like this was a good strat. So far, it doesn't seem like it's done much. And Twig has a few gaps in his walls, but if he walls to the north, and he walls this side, which he'll have plenty of time to do, uh, the militia will not accomplish anything. You could go for a trick and use your scout to distract the TC fire. What? Twig? Twig? You didn't even try and wall them? You didn't even try and, and garrison? I guess he didn't expect it? Alright, or you could just walk in. But anyway, that trick is uh, you have your scout in front, and then when the person garrisons their TC, you run from side to side, and the scout distracts the TC fire, and then the militia waltz in. Or you could just have your, ask your opponent nicely and they'll let you in. That seems to be what Daniel's done here. Well, will Twig snap under the pressure, or will he have a response in game four? Four scouts, a villager fighting, he'll clean up the drush, he cleans up the scout, this is very good stuff. He hasn't lost a single unit yet, this is perfect micro. Wow. Yeah. Five scouts now, and... Oh, Daniel has a dock. Hmm. 
Well, he can't. He can't actually make fishing ships. No, I don't think he can make fishing ships because the scouts can kill them. <laughs> I guess you could defend your fishing ships. I don't know. Daniel's wide open. I think Twig is going to have some success here. He sees the dock. He sees the spears. Can Twig get around before the walls finish? He might assume it's fully walled, actually. I bet you, since he's fully walled, he assumes that Daniel has done the same. Five deaths for Daniel. And make that six, because his fishing ship will die. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, need, you need some water control <clears throat> to push the scouts away. And that's why docking here doesn't make too much sense for me. I mean, players are going to figure this out. But I think if you dock over here, it makes more sense because it's hidden. And it's not in between the two of you. But you, you dock here, they're going to see it. And that was an oopsie. Can you say stop building fishing ships with a tone of frustration? <laughs> yes. Stop building fishing ships. How's that? Thank you, drunk fly. This is enough scouts to fight two spearmen. Twig goes in for it. He'll lose a few scouts in the process, but he could also kill villagers. All right. Oh my goodness. Eight kills, two deaths right now. Perfect start for Twig. Perfect start for Twig. The only reason he doesn't have a vill lead is because of the Malay bonus. The Malay spend less time uh, researching the next stage so they can get to creating more vills faster. It's almost like a three villager bonus when you click up to an age. Fire galleys for Daniel in the center. Spear defense on the left. Twig's making a lot of scouts. No dock for him. Now, I don't know what's best, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to try and dock if you're Twig. It wouldn't be a bad idea to dock here for a safe fish boom. I mean... There's lots of options. I feel like the qualifiers are going to give us a good taste, a good healthy dose of this map. And then when the main event happens, we still might see some different strats. Because there will not be mirror sieves. So uh, we'll definitely see different strats and, and different different plays, I guess. But for now, it's, it's really fun. Because I, as a caster, I'm trying to learn what might be best. And Daniel, he knows the scouts are there. Back at his base, he's just lost a villager, so he wants to tower. This is so peculiar, man. So far, these qualifiers are great. Hidden Cup 2 T90 Hype T90 Gwoo. Okay, now just imagine if Twig had a dock and he sent a demo this way. Oh my goodness, that would be amazing. You know if Tata was playing, he would. I think Daniel realizes he's behind, so he wants to try something. And he has placed a tower here. He needs to garrison his villagers, and there he does. Uh, meanwhile, he does have three fishing ships, and he's protecting them and, and making a fourth. So maybe he's delaying, as I always say, Malay need to delay. He's delaying on land and trying to take an advantage on water. Interesting. Could work. He has a three vill lead. He has a four fishing ship lead. It's just that Twig has the scouts. Twig is, is going for uh, forging. On a bunch of scouts, uh, many of which are weak, though. And now a dock for Daniel on the left. Daniel could bring himself back into this game. I mean, Daniel has the population lead. Now, how efficient his eco is, is a different story. And if he'll be able to keep units alive is a different story, as the scouts show up now to attack more fishing ships. Boom! All right, well, he killed him, all right? He only killed one with the demo, but whatever. He got the kill. Um... Yeah, 41 villagers for Daniel, three fishing ships. He's defending with spears, and he's going on water. I, I think Twig has got to be kicking himself now. Twig has got to be kicking himself. Like, why didn't I go water? There's so many fishing ships for Daniel. He can't kill them because he can't dock, or at least he hasn't. And Twig has built a defensive tower on his gold. Daniel will... Uh, it's risky to go in there, bud. Oh, we'll just build... Okay, he'll build a tower there. Because it'll still range the gold. Why not? Oh, there's a hole here. Oh, there's always a hole. Daniel, how's your quick wall, man? Quick wall... Oh! Wait, they're trapped! Run around this way, 
Plug the gap and they're trapped in here forever. Nice job from Daniel. He can get he can just send his spears around. And the scouts will have to leave. Oh, there's a hole here. And there was a hole here. 700 food for Twig. Now he has a large farming eco. And he's on stone as Mongols, which is huge if he wants to build a castle. He will click up here any moment now. Yeah. Daniel is certainly behind in the food count. I think he's just tested to see if he can cross. Oh, you know what? I wonder if the fishing ship... Is he testing this? Yeah, he must be testing this. Or the fishing ship is glitching out and trying to go to this dock. I think the fishing ship is trying to drop off the food to this dock. <laughs> Alright, that's the first I've seen that. That's, that's apparently a thing you have to pay attention to. Yeah, this is 15 food that he should have. Guess he hasn't realized. That that also won't show up as an idol. Which kind of sucks. So, fletching on the way for Twig. Is he making a range? Oh, oh, he's docked. He is docked. He's trying to go into water himself now. Daniel has three docks. Two on the left and one on the right. So, a demolition raft... Is coming out and then a fire galley will follow I think fletching was more for the tower than anything the scouts are back remember they have forging and at least one vill's got to die here right one yep one vill for three scouts I don't think Daniel will be too disappointed with that still has a slight vill lead he will be in castle age right after twig he scouted the dock so he'll make more navy. He's making a second dock on the right. The towers are in a good location on the left. I just don't see how Twig can easily do damage to Daniel if Daniel continues to prioritize the water and defensive spearmen. I think Twig will castle. He might need to castle his gold. Either... Hmm... See, if you castle the front, then you can easily control this water. I mean, geez, you could even castle the center of the map if you wanted to. Nice demo from Twig. Oh! <laughs> nice demo from Daniel on the night. Uh, but yeah, anyway, if he builds the castle, it can clear up some of this nonsense. Can he build here? Yeah, I guess it makes sense that he could, right? I'm not sure if the castle ranges both those towers, but it's a good thought process uh, to castle, you know, the water so you can take that back. And Oh, fire and demo now! Going after the fishing ships! That's two fishing ships down for Daniel. And it, the fish can't really run. So I really do think at this stage of the game, as long as players are, are being active with their military, uh, you're going to see less and less fishing ships. Uh, you can't be completely... In control of the game if you have water. Units can always run around. Uh, oh wow, I, I don't know how the knight got in here. Oh, there was an overchop. Units can run in. Yeah. And there's forging on this knight as well, so it'll kill villagers faster. I don't think Daniel noticed this. Daniel, you have to react to this man. For the first time in a while, Twig takes the vill lead. Okay, he's noticed it. He has a monk. He just needs to come back. Yeah, here he comes. Okay, so that- Oh, no! There's another hole! The game of holes! Jeez, well, he'll lose more villagers. And he will lose his dock over here. Mangadai are now being made. Twig is sending his Mangadai around the left-hand side, looping them around. And he had a knight here, too, so he killed three villagers there. Three or four here. Twig- it lost water in the center, but I don't know if it's that important. There's just a few fish left now. Water on the left is more important. And land eco is more important than ever, as there are fewer and fewer fish. Might be heading towards a game five, guys. We might be heading towards a game five. This is awesome. Still really close. I'm uh, still not sure that, that Daniel... Not sure what his strategy is. It's just monk defense right now, and then maybe he wants to go for navy later on. Again, he can't get fire ships to the left. 
if you could get ships from either side uh, to cross over, then I think water would be way too OP. And oh my god, the fishing ship bug keeps happening to him. So I played this with Melkor. Melkor was Mongols. Wait, no, Melkor was Malian, sorry. And uh, Melkor killed one of my castles with heavy demos. Great pickoffs from Twig. Twig kills three monks. He would kill more villagers. And Daniel sees the score. He's not happy about it. And he calls the GG. I don't know if it was over, actually. Um, I, I think that he... This is definitely a case of seeing the score and feeling like the situation was worse than it really was. But he was certainly behind. Uh, Twig would have probably killed more villagers here. Twig would have had a very, pretty big boom and Twig was Mongols. Uh, somebody had asked how many demos it takes to kill a castle. I'm not sure, but heavy demos can do it because I'd build a castle on this terrain trying to take control of the middle because Melkor had it. <laughs> and uh, he used demos to kill my castle. So game five it is, guys. This will be the first qualifier that goes to five games. I'm pumped. We'll go to the achievements briefly. Uh, this will be the first time that we've actually seen Bay in the qualifiers as well. So it will be a good test of that map. 43 kills for Twig. I, he had a good start, Twig. He had a really good start. I still don't understand Daniel's Drush. Doesn't make any sense to me. It was bad. But I was worried for Twig because he didn't take the water. I think if he goes scouts and then just gets a few docks up, he's fine because he doesn't fall behind on water. The way that Daniel almost came back was because of the water. Uh, Captain, I can show you the bracket of the qualifier after this finishes. Yep. Or if you'd like to see it yourself, you can type exclamation mark brackets. It's public. You can see it. Melty, thank you for the $20 during that, man. Uh, during tournament games, I try my best not to read subs and donos and all that. I try and focus primarily on the games. But thank you again for that. I agree. These games have been hype. The sieve for Twig is going to be interesting. Uh, he will have Indians. And it will be Celts. Warzone. Wait. No, it will not be Celts. It'll be Malians for Daniel. Game five, let's go. Thanks for HC2. Mugsy, you're welcome, man. Thank you. <clears throat> Alright. This is gonna be good. I think Indians are the worst Sif going into this. But just like the previous game, there's a water and a land element. Okay, I tried to have this epic silence before the game launched, and they must have paused. <laughs> so, uh, all right, all right, it's going to load up finally. Hype ruined. Okay, guys, here we are. This is Bay, and it is game five. Uh, the loser of this will not participate in Hidden Cup 2 anymore. The winner moves on to rounds two of the qualifiers. Uh, who, the finalists, so the final two in the qualifying bracket will make it to the top 16 that will participate in Hidden Cup 2, which will be April 11th to the 14th. It will be amazing, and there is a $10,000 plus dollar prize pool for the players. Daniel's here in the blue. Daniel won the first two games. Now here he is, it's 2-2. Two to two. He's playing as the Malians, and then, oh, this is a bugged map. What is this? <laughs> This is a bugged map. Oh, okay. I need to message Twig. What is this? What happened here? Of course, on all our test games, nothing like that happens. All right, let's 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 go back. Um, well, we don't... I mean, technically, this is playable. I need to message Twig about this, though. Uh, that that should not happen. He has a own, his own little wall there. That that will be fixed <laughs> or looked at, <laughs> and uh, we will we'll see this played again. Let me just message them. Twig hasn't responded. They're in game at the moment. Oh, they're back. Cool. They're back. Perfect. Um. So I, I guess I can show you the time they're restarting. Basically, eliminate this wood line, and this is what the map is supposed to look like. So. Uh, you can dock here easily, but you can't, you can't, uh, fully wall because of this terrain. 
And I, I'm actually confused because this was always a marsh when we tested it before. It wasn't this sandy terrain. I don't know if changes were made or to that yes. or what, but that wood line's the problem. So we'll, we'll get back into things I'll talk about in a moment. Sorry. It's weird. Oh, Twig actually called the re. <laughs> he like flat out called the re. So yeah, it's an admin re. Yeah, what that's supposed to be is Marsh. I wonder if one of my graphics changed that. So you, you fight for water on that map, and then there's there's 10 deer for each player in the center. So you can choose to go for all in water, or you could choose to go for the land. There's also a lot of stone and a lot of gold near the center of the map to promote aggression there. And also, the pond only has 10 fish. I think it's 8 fish, actually. So sure, it's important, but it's not going to last you all game. That was weird. Hey, Tax. I'm not sure why that does not look like Marsh, though. Yeah, let me... I mean, it shouldn't be snow. I don't have my no snow mod on. It's a good idea. It's all right. We'll figure it out. As long as the players can dock there, it's fine. The idea is that you can't dock block it. So you can't wall yourself in. Army can always walk around the shoreline. Lots of nice people. Lots of people here today. Nice to see you. Help AOE2 grow. Thank you, Tax. Thank you. Dude, I'm exhausted. Guys, I woke up at 7.30 a.m. and started casting games. It's almost 3. This is going to be some finale here. It's, it will be sad to see Twig or Daniel go home and not be able to fight on in the qualifiers because they both put on a real show for us today. Uh, Malay could be good because of the fish trap. I don't think you go into it doing it for the fish traps, but it is a good water sieve and a solid land sieve. So I think Malay is, is one of the best civilizations available that you could use for this map. I think the problem is Malay is also good on previous maps. And so Malay was already used by Daniel. And instead, he'll have Malians. Malians is a versatile sieve for land and water. So that's a safe bet. Uh, I don't like Indians. But we can talk about that as long as the map isn't bugged. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. Yeah, so I guess for whatever reason with the bug, the, there was a, a skinny little wood line instead of a normal wood line. Perfect. So welcome, my friends, to game number five. This is on a brand new map called Bay. This area also is fixed, so whatever was wrong has sorted itself out, which is perfect. Uh, we have Indians for Twig, who has fought back from being two games down. He's in the red. And then we have Daniel. He's in the blue, playing as the Malians, which I think is better for a water-slash-land hybrid map. But we will see. Uh, this map was created by Algernon. The previous map was created by Hank to Super Nerd, so make sure to thank them when you see them. There's fish in the center, this being the bay. Uh, you can dock this, you can fish here, you can fight on water, of course. But what you can't do is sit back in your base. Both players actually have a restart. Uh, I see Daniel running forward real early to try and lame. Both players have a restart available. And this is not for all the marbles, but this is for this is to move on in the qualification bracket. So a few things you need to know. I'm trying to keep an eye on the scout as I tell you this. Okay, that's bad for Daniel. <laughs> he lost HP on his scout and Twig found the sheep. There's always a wood line in the back corner for you, so you don't have to worry about your wood lines being bad. Just one wood line in the back corner. Um, then you cannot wall this area. So if you choose to wall between this wood line and this wood line to the water, there's always going to be an opening there. And then there is 10 deer in the center of the map for both players. The idea being that if you lose water, you can gain land control here. Or if you were to go forward, you could take your opponent's deer, just take some of the map back. You'll notice a lot of the golds and stones that are extra are near the center. So again, it's another reason that you can't full wall your base and just camp, because you will need the map control, and there's plenty of gold out here. Gold and stone meeting at the center area, and then there's gold on the edge of the map, and you can't stone wall, or you can't wall on this stone, sorry, whether that's palisades or stone. So it's just a fine mix of, of, of metas, I think, because 
normally on, on classic water maps, you see someone win water and then they win the game because it's such a big eco lead. Well, the idea here is that you don't gain a huge eco lead. There's only eight to 10 fish in the center. And then to win water, you have to play very passive on land and you're giving up a lot of map. So my, my hope is that if someone does lose water, they realize the significance of land and they, they try and take the map. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Again, Daniel's here, he's Malians, and I think Malians are much better for this. Malians have more options than Indians. They have awesome camels, they have awesome cavalier, awesome infantry. They, uh, they also have an amazing eco bonus and that all their wood buildings are cheaper. I mean, they have the monks, they, they have a lot. The only thing they don't have is great ranged units, but you wouldn't necessarily want to go with that versus uh, Indians on land anyway. They have both docked, and I assume they are both going to go for water. I guess one thing to consider is that Indians have cheaper villagers. So if this is going to be a fight for water, one advantage that Twig can take is clicking the feudal faster because he saves more food. But first impressions, guys, what do you think? Look, it looks cool. Like in theory, it could be freaking awesome, right? I'm biased because I spent time testing this and it's my event, uh, but I think so. We never know how the games are going to be until it's played. That's the sad part, but we'll find out now. Okay, so what I did uh, when I was testing this is I had, I played versus another player my level. And then I would let him choose whatever Civ, and then I would choose whatever Civ I might want. And I tested Mongols and Italians on this map because I thought those would be the top two. Neither player chose Italians in their draft, which I found fascinating because Italians is a strong water Civ. Uh, but anyway, so I was Mongols up against Italians, and I, I went for a Dock and Dark Age for food. But then I just gave the Italian player who went three Docks, tons of Fire Galleys the water. And instead... I took the thousand plus food out here that was I could find in deer. And I was able to make scouts to get map control. And it it turned into my opponent having a lot of fish, but then he ran out and I had the map. So it's I don't know. I, I'm curious to see how it plays out. Two docks for Twig, it's probably two docks for Daniel. Yeah. You always have to fight for water. But hopefully there's things to fall back to. This area, for example, is a perfect area to come forward. Uh, by the way, I also ran this by Tato. So Tato and Hera helped me with input on a lot of the maps. So there were pros that gave input on this one prior to you know releasing it for the event. Originally I had three boars. But I removed three boars because of Tato's input. So... So remember that moment where Daniel ran forward to try and steal a sheep? Well, he lost the HP on his scout, and now they're both in Feudal Age, and Twig is going to attack Daniel's scout and probably kill that. Now this, we I can't give you an example of how this is a hold, because you can't build on that land, but that is passable, okay? So this is all passable. I think Twig might believe he's dock blocking that, but there's always going to be an option for land units to go around. Two fires for each. I mean, it's identical right now. The only thing that's going to change is that Daniel's going to lose his scout. Don't use your demo yet. Yeah, really wise move. Good patience from Daniel. You need to save the demo until there's a lot of ships massed together. He was tempted to use it there. He didn't use it. Oh man, they're dancing guys. They are dancing. Does Twig have a demo on the way? He does. He has, he has two demos coming up. And now more fires for Daniel, so he'll have one less demo. Such a fine balance between demos and fires. Demos are a risk. It's like a Maganel. You don't know if you're going to land a shot. The investment might not be worth it. But you might, you might change the entire series with a Maganel shot or two. And now let's see if Twig is more patient. Okay, Twig is going to trade one for one with the demo. That's good, actually. Because he also weakened the fishing ships with that. That demo was not good. And now there's a demo from Daniel, and Twig has to run back. This is a very even battle on water. We even have the repair bills for both players repairing the ships. No, don't do it. Again, 
hard to find a good demo shot. And Twig will come back with that and repair that as well. This would be a solid demo right here. This would be perfect, actually. And Twig sees that. Twig runs away. Splitting up his units. This is very close quarters. So if you think the whole game is going to be even on water, think again. Someone's going to lose or win water quickly. This is actually going on longer than I expected it to because they're so close. You don't have room to micro. You don't have room to run. Both players need to play extremely safe, though, because their tournament chances are on the line. Cami, I'm not, I'm not yet sure if it's worth the amount of investment to gain seven or eight fish. I mean, you certainly need to fight. Oh, he could have killed the fishing ships. Let's see. That's a good demo for Daniel. He needs to pull his fires back. It is 10 military versus five all of a sudden. And wow, another demo goes off. Where's Daniel's numbers? That's my question. But they were even and then Twig created more and Daniel didn't. I think Daniel might just have lost some of his control on water. Twig's not sending in... He's, oh, he's not repairing these. They're weak. That makes sense. They're weak. He's not sending them in. Eight kills for Twig, though. That includes the scout. And it is just three deaths for him. And I think now Daniel needs to think about uh, other options. I, I don't think he has it anymore. If he can demo the fish... That would be really sweet. But I think fighting for water is not going to do much for him now. Just try and kill the opponent's fish. You're outnumbered here. I see he's adding farms. I also see he's walled his base this way, which is smart. Twig could do the same. He could wall this way instead of using the water to wall. Daniel actually has more food. And I think that's because he's gone for the farms. And now he's building a barracks. All right. I had speech to text on and sent a friend his tournament chances are on the line now. <laughs> Only you, Metal. <laughs> Only you, man. You could tell how much Twig was focused on the micro because his scout was out here. This would be quite a comeback. Twig was down two games to zero, guys. It would be extremely disappointing for Daniel, who's played well today. I'm sure it would give Twig a lot of confidence going forward. Yes! This is what I wanted to see! Taking the deer! Thank you! Thank you very much, Daniel, for showing people what is possible on this map. So he's still trying to make some navy, but he's not going to win water now. But there's only three fishing ships for Twig, and there's ten deer out here with 140 food. So Daniel must have thought about how he was going to lose water soon, because he prioritized the farms way more than Twig did. And I don't know, I, I just see the eco being more sustainable for Daniel because he doesn't have to worry about the fish running out. Whereas Twig, Twig has so much navy. Now granted, he does get good map control with this because he could go for War Galley and, and shoot this gold maybe, but not sure if the investment's worth it. And look at this demo. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sneaky demo. Oh, it got two fishing ships! That's so clutch for Daniel! That was so awesome! So now there's only one fishing ship for Twig. What a play! What a play from Daniel. Now a barracks for Twig. Twig is going to reach Castle Age first. I, I think he's doing that, though, because he's just purchased some food at the market. And we have two ranges, then, for Daniel. Uh, who could start going towards Twig's base, by the way. He doesn't have to stay at home. I think the lack of a scout is hurting him here. I think the lack of a scout is hurting Twig as well. Twig is so focused on the fights that he's not scouting to see what his opponent's doing at all. Two ranges. Daniel will click up to Castle Age, right? Yep, he will after this vill. And Twig will be right behind him. Or Twig will be right ahead of him. Man, this is so close. This is so close. This is awesome. 
Now, the, the camels that Twig is apparently going to make, uh, they could go through this hole in the wall. I think Daniel needs a gate there. I think that this is open as well, right? That's open as well, so you do need to wall your base in to prevent Twig from using mobility if you're in Daniel's shoes. Here comes an archer and a spearman. That might actually make Twig confident. He might think, I don't need a siege workshop for this. I don't need a lot of camels for this because it's just one spearman and one archer without fletching. Remember what I said, he has resources for now, but he needs that map control, guys. There's so many different resources to collect on this map. And, whoa, a sneaky stable. Daniel doesn't see that. And I think he wants his next TC to be out in the middle of this map. This is really fascinating now. One thing's for sure, though, the lack of a scout is hurting Daniel. Okay. It, wow. Three stables? Oh, I'm sorry, it's two stables. Forgot this was a barracks. Oh, don't tell me he's gonna run right in. That'd be so disappointing if Daniel doesn't plug the gap. Oh, he is. He is. Okay, he's plugged both the holes. Thank God. I hate to see players lose on small things like a hole in the wall that they forgot to fill. I mean, unless the player is playing against me, and then I get really happy, but... Wow, uh, these villagers have gone a long way. There is gold on this side as well, Daniel, but I guess he hadn't scouted that. And he TCs that hill. Man, he is so close to seeing the stables! Okay, now he sees the camels. Crossbow and Bod Canero's coming in. He can kill the camels. Yeah, those camels are gonna die. So Daniel's been surprised by this, sure, but I think he can stop this from getting out of hands now. He also has crossbows here, where Twig doesn't have any defense except for a siege workshop, which is creating a Maganel. This, this game is very, very close. Slight eco lead for Twig. We'll see how long the fish lasts him, though. So Twig got reward for his aggression on water. Daniel has gotten some reward for his aggression on land. This is... For someone who's created an event and envisioned like a map, um, and again, full credit to Algernon for doing all the work on it. Like this is exactly what I want to see from the game. Twenty-seven months till my three-year anniversary. Look forward. To Ouch! Daniel he has a lot going on right now, and he just lost his forward units. Twig has two TCs. I think the only worry for the guy is that his buildings, uh, his offensive military buildings, are almost unusable at this point. Honestly, if I'm Daniel, I wall this in. Uh, th that's the concern. I think the other concern is that he doesn't have a lot of this area of his map secured. Does Twig see this TC, or is he just going to get lucky? Oh, he's going to get lucky! Twig sees the villagers. Okay, Daniel sees the camels. He does have a monk there. I think only one villager will die. Oh, they're both alive! They're both alive! And Twig deleted a camel! There's a lot more camels over here, though. Wow. This is a sweet game. I, I want to say Daniel has the lead here, guys. A lot of the military that Twig has is on water, and it's not helping him. There's a vill lead for Daniel. Slight vill lead. And he has most of his base secured. Again, I, I would really like to see him wall up these stables so he wouldn't have to worry about them. At the moment, he seems worried that more units will come out of this, so he's staying at home and just killing them and protecting himself. When I think that he could have tried to run out across the map, maybe. A twig, realizing he needs more of the map, has built a TC here now. Monastery for any relics. And this is going to Imp, boys and girls. This is going to the Imperial Age, for sure. No doubt in my mind. So, so let, let's talk about the strength of the sieves. Uh, Malians, they have high pierce armor champions and pikes. Um, we probably will not see ranged units. Well, we won't see any archer units from Twig. What Twig could do if he expects infantry is go for the strong Indian hand cannons. Um, otherwise, the, the other thing that Indians could do is go camels. That's pretty much it. They can go camels, skirms, and they can go gunpowder. Malians, they have actually weaker camels. 
uh, if you think about it. They have strong camels, though. They also have cavalier, which is probably not something to make. Uh, and, and then they have the infantry and siege and, and monks. And I, so I think it's going to be infantry for Daniel. At least it should be. And then probably gunpowder for Twig. A Twig using this scout sees the monk. And, oh! Actually, we'll kill the monk. Oh, what? How did he not get a conversion there? Somehow didn't, somehow Daniel didn't get a conversion there. Uh, this is fascinating. Twig having water control means that he can attack those walls. And whoa, those quick walls from Daniel. Boom, 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 boom. Houses, 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 houses. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, God. The camels. Okay, they're going back. Now watch. Twig's going to get a conversion because that's just how monks work. It's just how monks work. He's going to get a conversion. No, it's fair. Perfect. And the crossbows for Daniel, they're coming back to save the day. Well, Twig, no, man. Or, not, I'm sorry, not Twig, Daniel. He deleted those quick walls, and now the camels are in. And yeah, they'll harass and kill a few villagers. I think that... Remember when I said that Daniel should run forward? I think that had he run forward, he just would have got his camels converted and his crossbows shot by Maganels. Okay. Somehow that paid off in some ridiculous way because the Maganels that Twig had killed the camels he just converted. <laughs> Somehow that kind of worked out. My goodness. Daniel does not have a lot of food in the bank. Meanwhile, oh, Twig has a thousand food in the bank. His macro has been far superior. Wow. I was expecting maybe 400, but a thousand? Okay, that's, that's bad news bears for Daniel. That is really bad. He has, uh, how many farms? 24 versus 25, but then again, Twig had the fish, right? The power of fish and the power of Indians. Yeah, it's a combination of the two. Indian villagers at this point are basically free. They're, the food cost is not 50 like it is for Daniel. Well, then Twig needs to push. Um, and, and I think he needs to consider making archery ranges and going for gunpowder. The beautiful thing about being faster in this position is that you have time to tech switch. And that's not something you always have the luxury of doing if you're trying to go for the hand cannons. Chemistry needs to be researched out of the university. That takes a long time. Then after that's researched, you can create the units. Uh, Redemption is an odd tech for Daniel to get. He gets it, and he's... Yeah, he attempts to convert the Maganel, and Twig wisely deletes it. And Twig snipes the monk. Twig also has navy he could send this way. Daniel's catching up with the food count. 87 villagers for him. Nice mango shot. The more map he has, the more time he's going to have. He's prepping barracks as well. I believe he wants to go for champs. Which would be good for Twig. Oh! Man, this is this is such high level stuff. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, for Hidden Cup 1, we didn't have a qualifier. And, uh... So, I, I'm kind of, like, in the Hidden Cup main event mode when casting this. Yeah, obviously, I know who the players are. But they're... Oh, no! Oh, I thought the castle would be denied! If it was the main event then everyone would have been saying it was doubt. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. This isn't going to be denied, is it? It is for now. It'll at least be slowed down. Giving Daniel all the time he needs, man. The castle's only at 30%. Twig is trying to get this down. Uh, Daniel's even coming forward to build a watchtower here. I don't know about that. There's tons of Naganels. The micro from Daniel is on point. Uh, the tower, now, nah, just don't worry about it. Just, just lay it as long as possible. I really don't think you need a tower here. He's doing a fantastic job, Daniel. He, he needs that tech switch. He also sees the archery ranges, and he sees skirms. And it's going to be light cav and skirm at the start for Twig. So skirms make sense. You make skirms in castle, and then you, you mix in the hand cannons later on. 
the castle's going up. It's just a matter of how many villagers die, how hectic it is before it goes up. Lots of dead vills, lots of dead military, and, uh, wow, Daniel even researched guard tower. Nah, I, I think there's a bit too much there from Daniel. The castle's going up for sure. And now he needs to run back. What's he making? We saw pikemen. I, I think he needs to go... Man, it's so tough. Like, you don't want to go cavalier versus Indians. And cavalier would be great versus elite skirm and light cav. So would camel. But you don't want to do that. And, and I'm not sure you want to go for... The champion either. Because twig could go for the chemistry upgrade. So you gotta decide on something and adapt from there. Certainly the skirms can kill the crossbows and the pikemen for now. Guys, Twig doesn't have a lot of this map. He does not have a lot of this map at all. He's trying to get more of it now by building these castles. But something that Daniel has done really well is, is he's taken map control. So the goal for him has got, has got to be to hold the map control that he's gained. And he's building this castle. That's one way he could do it. Uh, but that castle could be denied now. I'm not sure that goes up with the skirmishers chase. Light calf for Twig looking to raid. Uh, they could certainly do that, but they will be tracked by a camel. Now the pikemen have pretty high pure summer from aliens. So you could try and fight this with pikemen a bit, but I don't think the castle will go up for Daniel. He has 100 population and Twig has 160. Twig has 20 more villagers. He has 20 more military. He's going to get his castle up for sure. Plate barding's on the way. The light cap will die. The light cap will die. But what else is Twig going to have here? We've seen the skirms. We've seen the light cap. It's got to be gunpowder. I think Daniel's castle will go up. Uh, you notice this. Twig wants to take this gold. Daniel's already out here. Daniel has excellent map uh, vision. So he's he's pretty sure that he knows where Twig is going to be. I just don't know if he has the answers for Twig. All the barracks he built were forward right underneath the castle fire. Maganel gets shot down. And I imagine Twig is making trebuchets. Yep, he's making trebuchets out of one castle. Uh, Daniel's also making trebuchets. That, I'm tense. This is a good game, man. This is a good game, but Daniel, he needs to get champions and pikes out quickly. And remember, he can't full wall his base, so he can't wall here. So this area of his eco is always going to be exposed. He needs to secure that somehow. Twig needs to get the hand cannons on the way. Twig is opting for champion. Champion and skirm. Does he have chemistry? No chemistry for him. Well, that could be a mistake right there, guys. Indian champions are fine. Oh, look at this tower from Daniel. I love it. He built a tower on the gold. Now Twig is responding with a castle. So much gold being collected for Daniel. Definitely a guy who has seen the map before he played. Definitely a guy who's prepared. At the moment, Daniel's only making pikemen. He will need to make his own champions. Seeing the long swords. And now he's getting two hand oh sorry, that would be Twig getting two handed swordsman. So champion and skirm, uh, and light cap for raids. Twig is running low on wood as well. He will slowly need to get more map. He's doing it. It's about 50-50 right now. I'd say 60-40, I guess. Uh, with map control. Remember, water's not all that important now, but you do have fish traps. Fish traps could be good. And Daniel's going Arbalest. Daniel's going Arbalest. So Arbalest will counter the two-handed swordsman in most cases, but Malians don't get Bracer. And Twig already has the Skirmishers. Twig is in the lead. Twig is definitely in the lead, but something tells me that it's possible for Daniel if he keeps using his map awareness. He's lost that castle though, and there's golds here, there's stones here. And if he's not careful, he could lose his trebuchets. Hmm. I, I, I know it sounds scary versus Indians, but 
maybe go like Cavan Cavalier. Like Cavan Cavalier is mobile. It it would kill the champions. It would kill the skirmishers. I think that's better than Arbalest. Two relics for Daniel. If he snags this, that'll make it three. If he snags this, that'll make it four. I, I would try and tower here, maybe. Look at Twig's vision on the map. All right, and now look at Daniel's. Daniel sees so many of the important areas. The two-handed swordsman engage before the champion upgrade comes in. They're killing all of the pikemen, which is great. I don't think they will last against the Arbalest, but the skirms are still here. It's 60 military for Twig. 60 military versus 20 military. Daniel just can't find answers. The trebs go down. He's building guard towers to hold on. The trebs will continue to push in. Can Twig be stopped? Champion and skirmisher with Indians. Wow. And I believe he's about to raid. Man, if he sees this, if he starts raiding this area, Daniel will lose so much of his economy. Twig just has to know it's there. He has to, to, to see it. It makes me think that Twig <laughs> hasn't looked at this map prior to playing, but, you know, there's a lot going on. It's easy for us to say. There's a landing now from Twig. I saw the transport earlier. He still can't get through. Well, he can't go through this way unless he rams through. But he's denying that gold. Daniel is building towers to fortify his base. And, okay. Now, there's a tower for Twig. Because he knows there's something up here. Though, a lot of that gold is gone, though. There's still plenty of gold in the center for Twig. Bombard Cannon. That's a good move. And that's a big Maganel shot. It's now 40 military for Daniel and 66 for Twig. And there there we go. Chain Barding Armor. That's what I'm thinking. I think that you need to go Light Cav or, or Cavalier if you're in Daniel's shoes. You certainly have the gold. The Arbalest are in a nice position to chew up the champions as they try and close in. That That's a lot of champions going down. Daniel can do this. He needs to sort out his food eco, get Light Cav out. And he needs to hold on to this area where he's being raided. He has 140 vills, guys. But a lot of these villagers are going to die or be idled. So much of his eco is exposed. And this part of his eco is being attacked. Alright, defensive castle there for Daniel. What a finale to this qualifier. This is a sweet map. 200 population for Twig. Now he's building guard towers. And he'll begin the raids. I mean, at this point, Twig certainly has the lead. He has plenty of gold he can take. Uh, he's in the position to, to force his opponent to react as well. I think there's potential for Daniel, but I'm just not seeing enough military numbers for him. If that's my concern. He doesn't have the military numbers. So many champions and so many skirmishers for Twig. I think what Daniel needs to do is get some non-gold units. And that that would be light calf, so he's trying to do that, but I don't see a lot of food in the bank for him, guys. He has 77 food. These farmers are all denied. Uh, okay, he's built a tower on this gold. He actually hasn't scouted that one, which is unfortunate. Daniel's getting pushed back, and his Arbalest are dying to the skirmishers. That's not what he needs. Not his gold units. I don't see enough light cab. I just see towers and a few defensive siege workshops. And surely Twig will close this out now with some siege on the right side. I mean, he's slowly pushing up the center, where he has plenty of res. <laughs> um, he's keeping Daniel on the back foot. He's, he's keeping Daniel chasing. So Daniel comes to address this, and Twig could run right back in on the left. He's getting help now because he expects the light cap. Yeah, exactly. Twig will always have the time to respond. It's not looking good for Daniel, guys. Twig is playing too good. Twig has so much gold control. His eco is so safe. He is floating resources. He'll kill Bombard Cannons! 
Two Bombard Cannons killed just like that. There's simply too much going on for Daniel to follow it. He just can't keep up with everything. He had the right idea. He has a sieve that can beat Indians. But he didn't have momentum going to him. And Daniel calls the GG. He says good luck next. And that is the end. Twig was down two games and he came back to win 3-2. to two. What a series. What a series. I can't help but be heartbroken because Daniel played so well in this series. You never want to see a player go out of an event or in this case a qualifier after playing that well. But Twig, what a showing from him. What a comeback. Uh, on Gold Rush, he went for a strategy I never expected. He... It was, he deserved it. He definitely deserved it. Um, Daniel, where he went wrong in this game? Oh, it, it's it's really tough to say. It's really tough to say. I, I think that he just didn't plan ahead enough with his food eco. He had a lot of gold. I actually want to look at the achievements real quick. I, I want to say that his food eco was hurting him. Yeah, he had way less food eco. But look at the gold difference. So he had all this gold... Because he took that, that uh, like, southeast side. But what he didn't have was food. So, I think if he would have farmed more ahead of time, then he, I think it would have been fine. He could have gone for champions himself. He could have gone for the light calf. I didn't see many light calf in that game. It's because he teched into it, got the researches, and didn't have food remaining. Th that's probably what it came down to. And I think that he put a lot of focus on that castle. If you look back to this area... This area was where it all went down before Twig hit Imp. And he tried to build a guard tower there. I think at that point was when he researched guard tower. Uh, he he made pikemen start spamming into that area. I think there he needs to, to calm down a little bit. Say, okay, this is good. I'm killing a bunch of villagers. And then think about the fact that your opponent's making skirmishers. Because to me, what I saw was he overinvested in trying to stop this after already having... A good situation. It was a good thing going for him. He saw skirmishers, and instead of prepping stables, he prepped pikes because he thought that there would be a lot of camels coming, when in reality it wasn't the case. Uh, I mean, pikes are fine, but I think he had 30 or 40 pikemen that didn't accomplish anything. They just died to skirmishers, they just died to champions, so I think a mix of pikes and then calf, possibly even champions, would have been better. So that was really the point in the game where he didn't have control, and then Twig was able to take this map back. But the map itself was freaking awesome. It showed you that you have a chance to hang in a game if you lose water. It showed you what happens if you try and win water. Twig won water, had a faster castle time, but then he lost his map. And he had to push back. That's exactly what I envisioned. Um, that, that's exactly what I hoped for with Bay. Sweet stuff. Alright, I'll go through the achievements a bit more. Uh, 260 kills for Twig. Was that the best game of the series right there? I think that was the best game of the series. It's really hard to say. Game 1 was awesome. I mean, my commentary wasn't great in Game 1, I can tell you that much. But I think that was the best game of the series. Hard to say. 260 kills. Uh, largest army is a big stat difference. Again, it, it's weird. when When someone has that much more gold when you have that much more gold over your opponent and you have the relics this stat worries me and it has to be the food because he has so little food in comparison twig was faster to feudal by a few seconds one water he was faster to castle by a few seconds and then he was faster to imp by about a minute and a half or it's like two minutes or now, actually, that's not two minutes. That's three. <laughs> a little more than three. I got to learn to count one of these days. But, but um, yeah, sick play from Twig, man. But the, the whole game was close. The whole game was close. And Twig will move on to fight in the qualifiers. So, uh, I hope that excites you guys for the rest of the qualifiers that will happen tomorrow. Because there's still more round one matchups to happen. I'm going to show the brackets here. If you didn't see the Licks for Stark set earlier today, you might not want to look if you plan on watching it because this will spoil the result. Uh, if you didn't see the Land vs. Yingwa or Fire vs. Belgium, don't look at the screen for a few minutes because I'm going to show the